Welcome back. 24 hours have passed since we finished the coach side yesterday and put it aside to dry overnight. Um, there's the two sides there that I'm going to show you something with earlier, later, sorry. Uh, and there's the coach. Now, one of the things I did was I went through uh, looking at it very, very carefully under magnification to see if there were any little blemishes in the paint finish, some dust or anything. And there were a couple, so what I did was I just took them off very gently with a fiberglass pen. The idea being not to actually dig through the paint, just to take the surface blemish off, and that's been done, ready for the next process. So today we're going to look at the actual physical applying the teak graining coat. Of all the modelling jobs, this is one of my favourites, so uh, hopefully I'll uh, take you through it and uh, you'll see how easy it is to do. So for today what we're going to use, we're going to use some oil paint, and there are two colours primarily I have used. I say have used because burnt umber I used originally, and that used to give quite a bright colour. Um, but since then I've decided I actually prefer the slightly darker effect that Van Dyke Brown gives you. So these are oil colours. Um, to use them straight from the tube they will have quite a good coverage but they can be increased in transparency by using liquid original. And this also has the benefit of um, speeding up the drying time. So I think we're probably ready to have a go at some teaking. Um, I've got the two sides here. I'm going to use both colours so you can see the difference and, and make an informed decision of which one you prefer. But for the coach body here, I'll probably be using the Van Dyke Brown. So continuing from yesterday, we're going to use the Golden Taclon brush again, the flat one. And let's start by actually mixing some of the paints together. So let's take the, the lid off the uh, liquid and I usually use the brush for this. Just take a dollop onto the tile. Doesn't need a lot. Put the lid back on and I hate these type of caps. The push and turn and invariably this has dried on me. I have to use a vice to get it off. And I've now got it all over my hands so just bear with me. Right, okay. So let's start off with the burnt umber. And we don't need a lot again. We need a little bit. So we'll squeeze some onto the tile. And we want to do the Van Dyke brown at the same time. They don't look vastly different on the tile. But they will make a difference when we start painting the sides. Okay, let's take one of the sides and let's start mixing based on that umber first. So you can see you can see a degree of transparency on the tile. And if I transfer it to the model, so initially, what I'm trying to do is just get a coverage of all the bits. I'm not worried about it looking streaky or horrible or anything like that. Make sure I've got all the bits, got paint on them. So the idea is not to try and get it on too thick. It's almost a case of less is more. Okay, so I've got a, a fairly good coverage of, of that one. I might leave the door with my fingers on so it'd be easier to hold it while I do it. Okay, so that's the side's got a good coverage of the 
oil paint. I've got round the windows and all the other bits. Okay, now it's probably a good idea at this point to wipe the brush to get the surplus off. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start brushing out the oil paint and this is where we are starting to do it in the direction of the graining of the coach. So we're brushing it out very carefully and what will happen is the paint will try and accumulate wherever the brush crosses a raised projection. So if you can see there, um, there's a slight shadow of the paint, so we need to make sure that that doesn't happen. By teasing it away. Now you'll get to a stage where you'll do this in a particular sequence, and the easiest one is to do the upper panels first, wiping the brush in a vertical direction, like so. Get some of that off. The tops of the window, the tops of the windows aren't usually a problem because they're not actually a teak grained finish. They're usually painted or chromed. So they're going to be painted separately later on. So let's just finish the graining of the top panels. Like so, and then you can run along the waist, do that horizontally. Like so. Now there's no urgency in this, the paint will take a long time to dry. Um, so you've got plenty of time, you can play with it as much as you like. Um, I'm hoping by holding it here, the camera might pick up the effect that you've got on the surface. And you can see there are grain lines appearing where the, the oil paint has streaked, letting the base colour show through, like so. Let's just paint that out the top there because that would be timber on the original. Okay. So there we have a side painted with burnt umber. Right, let's put that one down for the moment. Now let's have a go with the Van Dyke Brown. Now the Van Dyke Brown is darker, so it's ideally suited for a vehicle that has been in service for longer. So if in the LNER days you're trying to do a great northern coach, then Van Dyke Brown might be a better option. But I would advise you to experiment on some bits of plastic card first, just to see which you prefer. Now this is the Van Dyke Brown going on. As you can see, it is actually very, very dark at the moment, but that will lighten up as I spread it out. The key with this is you've got to spread it out. You can't just plonk it on and assume it'll be okay, because it'll be far too dark. So as before, I'm just gonna go over coach. One of the other reasons why we finished the sides with a layer of clear uh, before putting it aside to dry overnight initially was that it leaves it with a slightly gloss surface which makes the paint glide over it a little bit better. It doesn't adhere as much as it would to a matte surface and as a result it results in being slightly streakier which is exactly what we're trying to achieve Okay, I think that's probably enough to be able to demonstrate the difference. So what I'll do now is I'll do what I did last time. I'll just wipe the brush. And we'll start brushing it out in the direction of the grain. 
And in an ideal world, we want to keep trying the brush every so often, get the excess off. Right, start on the top panels, and again, making sure we don't get any in the recess where the panels are. We get an unnatural shadow. Right, let's do the horizontal. I'm going to have to do the verticals again, but it doesn't matter. There's plenty of time. The idea is to get it as exactly how you want it before you put it aside to dry. So let's just keep working that until I'm happy with it. Bit there looks a bit on the dark side. Let's just make sure we get more taken off. Right, start graining again. Like so, a little bit more careful on the horizontal this time. Now, I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up. You can see the graining certainly on the horizontals there. And if you really feel like it, you can experiment and put sort of various grain figures into the surface. And sometimes it's quite nice to do that. Or you can just leave it absolutely plain like that and not worry. Okay, so that's the Van Dyke Brown. As you can see, it is quite dark. And for comparison against it, here's the version with um, the Burnt Umber. The Burnt Umber is subtler. This is a slightly darker brown. I actually call it like that. As I say, if you don't want X-Works, that comes out very, very well. So I think I'm going to use that one for the main coach. So I'm not going to put you through agony watching me do that. So let me just make a start and then I'll show you when I've got to the end doing it. So again I'm going to start off brushing it roughly on, not trying to coat it in an even coat like normal paint, I'm not trying to swamp it because those on's got to come off. And make sure the cornice is treated which is the strip along the side of the roof there. Just a bit above the top as well. Upper panels there. Right, while I'm doing this, you'll probably notice I'm trying a different camera angle, which I hope will make it easier to see what I'm doing. done much in the way of videos as you probably gathered so like other people I'm learning all the time right so if I just start texturing this just brushing out the panels in the right direction If you're painting a kirk side, then you need to remember that because of the thickness of the side, you need to make sure you take the teak graining colour into the window recesses, or it'll look extremely odd. Unless you intend to paint them black to try and reduce the visibility of the side. Slight 
Now that's what you're looking to achieve. So it's just a subtle, very subtle graining effect. And it just lifts the model from what appears to be sort of fairly flat painted to something that's got a bit of depth. Okay, let me get on with that and I'll come back to you when I've done it. So the whole side has now been covered in the oil paint and I'm now slowly brushing it out, thinning it so that the base colour shows through, graining it, taking the bits out so they don't appear as dark shadows where it crosses beading, generally working it to a state that I'm happy with. As I say, there's no rush for this job because the oil paint isn't very quick drying. So there's plenty of time to get it to a state that you're happy with. Slowly work it, improving it all the time, hopefully. Right, hopefully you can see on the bottom panel there the graining is really starting to show. I'm using very light brush strokes, I'm not using heavy, just to tease the paint out, dark splotter there, and again the vertical panelling. Right, now as a general guide, the upper panels are grained vertically, the lower panels horizontally, but there are exceptions. Whether you want to model that on the coach is entirely up to you. Let me just explain what they are. It's around the doors and the coach ends. So on the doors, the pillars either side of the door are all vertical, like so. And the door ventilator it's grained horizontally like that. Let's do the other side. To be honest, whether anyone will see the difference in the graining of the pillars, is anyone's guess. I'd like to know it's there. Now yeah, it's coming there together quite nicely, I think. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, the ends are done very, very similarly. The only difference is, of course, that they're grained vertically. So let's just finish the central door. Again, if you want to be really, really correct, then the horizontals on the door would be like that, and the panels and the edges would be vertically grained. I want to clean that up a bit more before I let it there. So I'm going to 
turn the video off at this point. I'm going to complete the other sides of the coach and then I'm going to put it aside for another 24 hours for the oil and the liquid to go off. 24 hours should be ample. Um, when it does go off it goes a slightly matte shade so you can usually tell by looking at it when it looks as if it's dried. Um, but I'll do what I said I'm going to do. I'm going to turn off the camera and continue working on the coach. Well another 24 hours have passed and the oil paint is now dry. The finish looks a bit lacklustre um, but we're going to bring that right back by applying a final coat of clear. Now again the reason for applying the clear is to protect the surface from any further things we might want to do to it. So let's just paint clear on. So this is the burnt umber. No, it isn't, sorry, this is the Van Dyke Brown. Let's just put that there. This is the burnt umber. Now, actually, the graining is very, very difficult to see now. But the clear will just lift it a little bit. Now, the lighting in here isn't wonderful to actually see what I can see in real life. So I will, in a moment when the clear has dried, take it out into daylight and do some close-up photographs so you can see what it really looks like. Okay, that's the side. And now, of course, the side itself. Again, make sure that's got a good protective coat on it. Again using a golden tackle on brush. and just make sure it's got a good protective coating. Might look a bit on the wet side but clear does dry takes out a lot of the excess so you end up with a fairly thin coat. There we are, so I'll do the rest of the body as before, I won't bore you while I do it. So the side has now been fully treated with the clear and the ends and I'll now put it to one side for the clear to go off. So all the teak work is finished, the clear has been applied and has had a time to, to dry. Um, so the next stages would be to apply any lining, add any transfers, give it another coat of clear and then add weathering. So I'm now going to relocate this into natural daylight so you can see better the finish. So on the top you have the burnt umber version and below it the Van Dyke Brown and you have the finished coach
can see the detail still shows, hasn't been obliterated. So it doesn't look as if it's under being painted with a tar brush. <laughs> 